Mr. Boone, I, I find you a very difficult man to deal with. Well, I don't aim to be difficult, Mr. Murchison. I just don't want to sell my property. Well, you realize, don't you, that the property you speak of is mostly wilderness. Now, you obviously don't have the capital to benefit from that potential. We have. Undeveloped land is a sinful waste. According to your lights, I must be the most sinful man in the country. But I aim to stay that way. Uh, you're, uh, you're quite sure that you won't reconsider? We're offering you a small fortune. Well, Mr. Murchison, it may seem strange to you, but I know what to do with that land. I wouldn't know what to do with all that money. In that case, we'll have to be satisfied with buying the adjoining properties. Well, now, you can try that, too. But to be perfectly honest, I'm going to advise every settler in Boonesboro against it. Good day, gentlemen. Do, do you realize that a million dollars worth of timberland just walked through that door? Does he really have that much influence with the settlers? I'm afraid he does. They look on him as sort of a demigod, a pillar of strength, and the dispenser of the gospel. And let's get rid of him. Get rid of him? Find a way to discredit him, humiliate him, destroy the image, you destroy the man. Oh, it's been done before. Do you have a plan in mind? Matter of fact, I have. I also have a man in mind who can accomplish it. Another miss. You'll never win a medal with a name like that, Blake. Dots aren't my game. I'm still on top. There he is, the big man sitting at the table with his back to the fire. Gentleman Tom Cromwell, former heavyweight champion of the British Empire and the toast of London. A professional fighter? One of the greatest. According to records, he's already killed four men in the ring with his bare fists, so uh, I rather imagine he'll be able to face Boone down. Surely you don't think that uh, having Boone defeated in a fight will make him change his mind? Of course not. I merely want him there in case Boone tries to interfere with what I have in mind. What makes you think he'll cooperate? Reason enough. If he refuses, I can have him sent to prison. Come along. Gentlemen, I'd like to have you meet my partner, Mr. Murchison, Mr. Cromwell, Mr. Blake. I, uh, I have a job for you two. Oh, and what is it this time? I want you to help me close a land deal. It's a little out of my line, wouldn't you say? I rather think your talents will be equal to the task.
Gentlemen, it would give me great pleasure if every one of you would be my guest. Landlord, broach a keg of your finest Jamaican rum. Why, these here are real English sovereigns. I didn't know there's that much gold in all of Kentucky. There's plenty more where they came from. Well, come along, gentlemen. Haven't you got a thirst? Mister, I sure like the way you say howdy. Cincinnati ain't opened a keg of Jamaica since way last Christmas. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, friend. Thank you, sir. Your health. You suppose any of these is boom? Well, not by the description I have. Well, do you uh, plan on staying around here long, mister? Well, it all depends. If I like the look of things, I might open a branch of my business here. Well, uh, what kind of business you in? There you are, sir, my card. Continental Fur Company. Buying or selling? I shall be buying. Well, any special kind of varmint? I'm not varmint, sir. Beaver. I shall buy all I can lay my hands on. You buy this one, mister? Well, that's what I call service. Now, did you really catch that beautiful thing all by yourself? Well, my sister helped me a little bit. Now, don't you go bothering Mr. Cromwell now, Israel. He, he ain't interested in no mangy old pelt like that. On the contrary, lad. I said I was buying beaver, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Blake the money. Yes, sir. Right here. Seen so much of There you are, lad. A bright new silver shilling. And I think you'll agree that's a fair price. Criminently. Will you buy another one if I can get him, mister? Lad, I'll bring every one you catch. I better get out of home and tip that trap again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blake, you better take good care of this until I can make arrangements for further storage. I'll unpack the traps and the other gear while I'm about it. Well, gentlemen, I'll leave the decision up to you. Perhaps you don't like my proposition. You mean to say you're serious about buying on-prime beaver skins? Well, certainly I'm serious. You see, the condition of the fur is unimportant for my purpose. Then, mister, you better stand steady and keep your money handy. Because when word of this gets around, I reckon you're going to see more beaver than you ever thought existed. <laughs> Hey, and fellas, if you run out of traps, I'll furnish all you need. You, uh, sure you know what you're doing, mister? Oh, yes, you can depend on that. Well, then I reckon you're gonna need some space to transact your business. So, uh, I think I can scare up a little here in the store. Well, it appears that you're being very generous. Yeah, you know, ain't being generous, just being practical. Having a little liquor handy when them folks come to getting paid off ain't gonna hurt my business none. <laughs> And it seems we've made ourselves a business arrangement. Well, then let's drink on it. Sharp enough to suit you? Oh, I never got the job done. Dan? Oh. This is Ann Denning, Mrs. Hastings' niece. She's visiting from Philadelphia. I've been showing her the valley. Well, pleased to know you, ma'am. The pleasure's mine. I've heard so much about you, Mr. Boone. Will you be staying with us long? Oh, it's so beautiful. I may never leave. I think autumn's my favorite season. Oh, and mine. It's hard to believe it's harvest time again. This year's gone so fast. Well, it's been a good year. It was a man's heart good to see a stand of grain like that. Best crop we ever made. One good thing about it, it'll keep you home until the harvest is done. If I stay here long enough, I'm apt to become a farmer. I know how you feel, but... Pa! 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 Look what I got! Look what I got, Pa! Israel, where did you get that money? I sold my beaver! You what? I saw my beaver. Mom and me trapped. Well, now, hold on, Israel. You know Cincinnatus wouldn't buy a pelt like that. Cincinnatus didn't buy it. The other man did. Well, what other man? The man at the fort. He said he'd buy all the beaver I could catch or anybody else. I better find Mama so I can sit that 
trap again. That's the strangest thing I've ever heard. Now, why would anyone do a thing like that? I don't know, but I think I'd better find out. Oh, Mr. Boone, can I walk back with you? I'm afraid my aunt might think I'm lost. Come right along. Thank you, Rebecca. I can't think when I've had such a nice time. Nor have I. Please come back again. Oh, Dan, don't forget my knit bobbin. Enter Mr. Daniel Boone. You think that's him? Yes, that's him, all right. He answers the description perfectly. I think I've ever seen him before. From the way the tall one's looking at you, he must know you. I hate to disagree with the lady, but I figure he's staring at you and not me. What a nice compliment. Thank you for letting me walk with you. I'm sure we'll meet again. Sure we will. Don't forget your wife's knit bobbin. I'll go and introduce myself. To which one? A boon is my first concern. A woman can wait. What can I do for you this afternoon? Well, you can tell me where the knit bobbins are. And then you can spread the word that the harvest will start at the Marshall place in the morning. Well, not unless you figure on doing it all by yourself, it won't. What do you mean by that? Well, help me with this bitch here, will you? Ain't you heard? We got a booming beaver. Everybody's busy setting out a trap line. This one was right. Somebody really is buying summer pelts. Yeah, that's correct. Now I'll get you them bobbins. I'd like to meet this man. I think that can be easily arranged. Uh, my name's Cromwell, Thomas Cromwell. I take it you're Boone. I've heard quite a lot about you. Well, I've heard a lot of things about you, too. Yes, news does travel fast, doesn't it? Would you care to join me for a drink? I understand you're buying beaver skins. That's correct. A shilling a piece in case you're interested. Well, I'm not interested, Mr. Cromwell. But you might say I'm curious. Well, any questions you may have, I'd be only too pleased to answer them. Well, now, you know as well as I do that those skins are worthless this time of year. Yes, but not for my purposes. Well, what are your purposes, Mr. Cromwell? The skin is no good for leather, and the fur is bad. Then let's just say it's a gesture of goodwill. If I employ these people now, they'll trap again for me in the fall instead of a competitor. And by fall, there won't be any beaver left to trap. For that, I have no answer. Well, I would think of one, Mr. Cromwell, because a lot of people are going to be asking questions. You are a suspicious man, aren't you, Mr. Boone? In this case, I am. And I aim to find out what you're about. Now, listen to me, Mr. Boone. I'm not interfering in your business. And I advise you not to interfere in mine. Are you threatening me, Mr. Cromwell? I'd prefer to call it a warning. <laughs> traps. You see, even if we caught a beaver a day, it would take us nearly three weeks to earn a gold sovereign. How many shillings in the sovereign? I told you, it takes 20. Well, if we had two traps, we could earn 20 shillings in 10 days. And if we had 20 traps, oh, don't you see? We need more traps. Hey, that Mr. Cromwell has a whole bunch of traps. And he said he'd let anybody use them who wanted to. Mima, Israel, haven't you finished your breakfast, Jack? Israel Boone, you haven't even started. Now, how many shillings are there, Sovereign Ma? 
Yes? And I know how much porridge there ought to be in your stomach. Mom! This goes right here, and here it stays until that bowl is empty, young man. And as for you... Well, I'm all finished, Ma. Well, that's better. Maybe we can get some chores done around here this morning. Around here? Were you thinking of going to work for some other family? No, it's just a... Well, I thought maybe you needed something from the store. Oh. Well, your father did forget that knit bob and asked him to pick up for me yesterday. Oh, we'll go pick it up for you this morning. We? Israel and me. Oh, the two of you for one little knit bobbin. Well, we just asked that Mr. Cromwell. Ow! You're supposed to be eating your porridge, remember? Well, you don't have to break my shin bone. What is between you two? You've been absolutely moony ever since. Oh, Mr. Cromwell. You were thinking of borrowing some more traps from him so you could go into the fur business, is that it? Well, we didn't figure on setting up at a business exactly. It's just in our spare time, kind of. Very well. Go ahead and ask him. Gee, thanks, Mom! I'll be right back. Another few weeks and we'll be finished here. I wonder what they're gonna do with all those filthy pelts once we leave. I just hope we get a good head start before they find out what's been happening. Oh, don't fear. We'll have a good enough lead. I'll tell them we're going into Salem to make a deal on the fur. They're gullible enough to believe in that. Unless Boone gets wise. Oh, I'll take care of Mr. Boone. If you don't, I will. Now, you keep that knife of yours up your sleeve where it belongs. I don't want us hunted down by the law for murder. That would be nothing new for you, would it? You shouldn't have said that, Blake. Why shouldn't I? It's true, isn't it? You know I don't like that word, Blake. So don't ever use it lightly. Oh, you take your hands off me. I don't like to be pushed around either. You remember that. Mr. Conwell, you remember me. Well, of course I remember you, lad. Well, have you brought me another beaver? Well, well, that's what we came to see you about, Mr. Cromwell. Now, don't tell me you're the sister that helps this young fellow with his trapping. Yes, sir. I'm Jemima. Well, this is a pleasure. Well, come on, lad. How about the beaver? Well, the problem is, we only got one trap. And we figured if we had more, we can make money faster. Well, that's pretty good figuring, lad. But tell me, uh, how many traps do you think you're going to need? Do you think five would be too many? They'll give six altogether. Well, that sounds pretty reasonable to me. We'll take real good care of them. I'm sure you will. Here you are, lad. I'll just give your name to Mr. Blake there, and he'll enter it into the ledger and keep our record straight. Israel. Israel Boone. Any relation to Daniel Boone? He's my pa. He's her pa, too. <laughs> what are you laughing about? Well, excuse me, miss. I just thought of something funny. I think we'd better be going, Miss Hill. Or I'll take half of them. Goodbye. Oh, I almost forgot to thank you. Good luck to both of you. Boone's own kids. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks about that. I doubt if he's even aware of it. They've been telling me that he's been gone for the past two days trying to recruit men for the harvest. Excuse me. Can I be of any assistance? Oh, uh... I'm afraid not. I was looking for Cincinnatus. I'm afraid he's busy out there in the storeroom at the moment, but uh, can I be of any help, Mrs... Uh... Denning. Anne Denning, Mr. Cromwell. You see, I've heard about you. And uh, it's Miss, not Mrs. Uh, would you uh, care to come in and wait? Oh, thank you. I'll come back later. Forget about it, Tom. Whatever it is you're thinking about, Mr. Hamer wouldn't like it. Well, fortunately, Mr. Hamer isn't here. Mr. Hamer isn't as far away as you may think. We're meeting him tonight.
realize, of course, that you're ruining my reputation. <laughs> Judging from the way I behaved yesterday morning, you must think me a bold brazen hussy. A mistaken first impression. Please accept my apologies. Oh, there's no need to apologize. It was quite deliberate on my part. But then I thought that uh, a man of your background would recognize it as a trick that women sometimes use to gain attention. Of my background? Well, what I imagine your background to be. And what's that? Oh, younger son, a titled family, out to seek his fortune in a new world. That's very flattering. And I'm wrong. And you're not what you seem to be. Must I go on guessing? All we've done tonight is talk about me. That's because I wanted to know more about you. And I want to know more about you. And so, now it's your turn to do the talking. If you knew everything about me, perhaps you wouldn't want to see me again. That's not true. How do you know it isn't? <sighs> Call it woman's intuition. A highly overrated way of forming an opinion. What are you trying to do? Make me think terrible things about you? I was just trying to make you curious enough to want to see me again, that's all. Well, you've succeeded in that. And, and I, I, I really must go. Tomorrow, then? You can come for supper if you like. There's nothing I'd like better. Good night, Anne. Good night. What took you so long? Well, we couldn't leave without some sort of explanation. Well, I suppose not. That's unimportant now. How are things progressing? Smooth as silk, sir. Smooth as silk. They took one look at the money and swallowed our story hook, line, and sinker. There's a few of them haven't borrowed extra traps yet, but they'll come around. You can bet there'll be no crops harvested in Boonesboro this year. My word on it. It'll be a hungry settlement before the winter's done. A hungry settlement or an empty settlement, it doesn't matter. Just as long as they'll be forced to sell. You can depend on it. Uh, what about Boone? He's away right now trying to recruit men for the harvest. The settlers are paying no attention to him. Without their help, he'll be forced to give in. Well, I want more than that. Then give me time. If I'm to kill Boone, the challenge must come from him first. That was part of our agreement. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I don't care how you accomplish it. I just want Boone dead. Dead he will be. tired, dear, and depressed. Want to talk about it? You know, I've talked so much these last three days, I'm all talked out. Nobody listens. Almost nobody. Well, darling, greed's a common failing. Perhaps you expect too much of people. I suppose so. It's a sudden change. I thought I knew the folks we came out here with. Thought they wanted the same thing we want. Our own land and 
enough room for our children when they grow up, too. But it appears that's not what they want after all. Mama, what are you doing up? Paul, I heard what you were saying. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand. I'll talk to Israel in the morning. We won't go traveling anymore. Well, you're not to blame, Mama. Are you going up to bed? All right, Paul. Good night, Ma. Good night, dear. No man just can't sit around and brood with a family like that. You know, I've done my best and failed. There's no reason why I should fail you, too. So tomorrow, come sun up, we're going to start getting our crops in. <laughs> you out trapping like all the rest. I thought you might need some help with the harvesting. Yeah, word gets around. Yes, even the Cherokee are beginning to talk. They say there's a madness in Boonesboro. They watch the white man wading the streams from dawn till dusk, trapping for furs that are not yet in their prime. While at home, they let the crops grow rank in the fields. A whole summer's labor wasted. They're right about that. You have tried to stop them, Daniel. Well, talking doesn't do much good when somebody else cries gold. Hmm. Do you, uh... Do you have another one of these? Well, now, don't tell me they taught you to use a scythe at Oxford. <laughs> well, it wasn't uh, on the regular curriculum, but I learned quickly. <laughs> well, now, if you're serious, I reckon Cincinnatus has a few to spare. Nobody else is using them around here. Becky! Yes? Gonna go to the fort and pick up another scythe. Mingo's gonna help with the crops. Be back soon. We'll be ready. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty pelts. That's twenty shillings. See, there's a place in the storeroom for these, will you, Blake? Here we are. That's one gold sovereign, Mr. Topper. Twenty shillings. Not bad for a few days' work, huh? Oh, it's fine. Just fine, Topper. Now, we'll put that on your account, and you'll owe me a little over uh, four pounds. I'll tell you what. I'll put 15 shillings on my bill, and then that'll leave me five shillings to buy my friends a drink. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just put the whole thing on your bill, and your friends can go thirsty. Oh, Daniel, I ain't seen you around for a couple of days. Cincinnatus. You too, Mingo. You know Mr. Cromwell here? I have another pleasure. Well, you two being from London, so to speak, I figured you might have a lot in common. Oh, so you're from London. I grew up there. Well, I hardly expected to meet a Londoner out here. Especially one who looks so little like a Londoner. Yes, you would look a little odd promenading in Berkeley Square, to say the least. I left England quite a few years ago. We must have a talk one of these days. Yes. Don't tell me you two been out trapping beaver. Oh, well, we've got better things to do, Tupper. Yes, Mr. Boone doesn't share the general enthusiasm over making money. Although his children seem to take a different view. Well, you can't blame them too much. They're not like Tupper here. They're too young to know better. You got some objection to my making money? It's not the money I object to. It's what's happening because of it. And uh, what's that, may I ask? The crops are not being harvested. Well, is that true, Mr. Tupper? Are you really neglecting your farm merely to run a trap line? Me? Farm? Well, Tupper here has sowed a few wild oats in his time. 
That's just about as close as he's come to working the land. That's close enough. That's not true of the others. They put in a lot of time and work on their crops. They're the ones I feel sorry for. Well, you sound like there's some kind of a disaster, Dano. What else would you call it? Well, I know, but it ain't that bad. Well, it will be. Unless you plan on hauling provisions down the wilderness road in the dead of winter. Now, Dan, do you know that road is not passable in winter? I have an idea Mr. Cromwell knows it, too. You are implying, I take it, that I am making a deliberate attempt to starve out this settlement. I am. Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? I haven't figured that part out yet. And when you have, what do you intend to do about it? I don't know. Since now, I need two hand sickles and a scythe. Well, come on out to the straw room and see what I can do for you. It appears as though I rubbed Mr. Boone the wrong way. Don't pay him no mind, Mr. Cromwell. He don't own the settlement, even if it is named after him. Well, thank you for your vote of confidence, friend. Yeah, buy yourself a drink. Thank you, Mr. Cromwell. Your health, sir. It looks like you'll have to be the one to pick this fight. Boone isn't going to start it. Well, perhaps it won't even be necessary. Are you welshing on your bargain? I wish I could. I told you to stay away from this Denning wench. She's the cause of this. Now, listen to me, Blake. I'm going to tell you something. If you so much as mention her name again, I'm going to break your neck. Well, anyway, here's your side, Daniel. I'll get them sickles for you directly. I swear, I don't know where that boy puts things. Jericho! Get in here and help me find these things. Well, that boy will leave things alone where I put them. I know where that's right here, and I tell him to leave things here, but he always puts them someplace else. I'll find it. It's over in here someplace. All right, get over here. Watch out! Look out! Daniel, why is that man Cromwell trying to pick a fight with you? You've noticed that, too. It's quite obvious. Take my advice, Daniel. Don't fight him. Well, I hope I don't have to. Cromwell. Cromwell. It seems to me that there was a man in London named Cromwell who fought for prize. Well, this man hasn't got the marks of a fighter. If it's the same Cromwell, he was so clever that very few of his opponents were able to land a blow on him. A champion professional fighter. Yes. Champion at one of London's more interesting diversions. Two men fight with their bare fists until only one of them is left standing. The winner receives a prize in money. But the loser frequently is left crippled. Or dead. So be careful, Daniel. Do what you must do, but if it comes to a fight, try to have it on your terms, not his. Interesting place. Well, reserved for courting. Except no one courts. They're too busy trying to keep body and soul together. And our being here would seem to indicate intention on my part. Or on mine. Don't forget, I brought you here. I wish it could be true. Is it so improbable? Yes, Anne. It is. I didn't mean to pry. It's just that I'm interested in you. Interested in what? My way of speech? My manners? My noble bearing? Please don't mock me. I'm not mocking you, Anne. If anything, I'm mocking myself. I wasn't born to the nobility. I was born in the gutter in the slums of London. 
Oh, you've never seen the man, so I can't describe the poverty, the cruelty, the filth. Go on. You either fought to stay alive or you died. No one seemed to care a great deal, one way or the other. I was one of those who fought. And when I grew old enough, I made it my profession. I also gave private instruction to the wealthy. I taught them how to use their bare fists, and... they taught me how to behave like a gentleman. And that's what you were afraid to tell me? You couldn't choose the place where you were born. You became what circumstances made you. No, Anne. To say I fought other men for money is not sufficient. Because every time I met an opponent, I had had one idea in mind. And that was to destroy him completely and ruthlessly. Well, is that what circumstances made me? Take a look at these hands. Four people have died as a result of the beatings I gave them. Take a good look at the man. They're the hands of a murderer. Rewards of honest toil. I told you I wasn't cut out to be a farmer. Oh, maybe not, but you put on a pretty good imitation of one today. I'll get some grease and bandages for those blisters. Daniel! Daniel! You'd better come with me, Daniel. Your woodlock is on fire. He's got a fire break and trying to save the crop. Mingo, get an axe. interest, Mr. Cromwell, but don't you think you've had about enough? I'll be the judge of that. Well, it's your headache, not mine. Oh, Daniel! What brings you out this time of night? I want to have a talk with Mr. Cromwell here. Then you better make it some other time, because right now I'm rather preoccupied. Right now we talk. Don't ever lay your hands on me again. Damn, whatever in the world got into you? Somebody tried to burn me out tonight. What do you know about it? Burn you out? That's what I said. Well, in that case, I'll excuse your lack of good manners. I said, what do you know about it? I might be a great many things, Boone. But an arsonist, I'm not. That's right, Daniel. He couldn't have done it. He's been here drinking ever since late afternoon. Well, in that case, I apologize, Mr. Cromwell. And now I'm going to ask you for a favor. I never thought of you as being a man who'd ask a favor of anyone. I'm not asking for myself. It's for the whole settlement. You want me to stop buying furs so that you can get your harvest in? Ten days. Two weeks at the most. I'm sorry, my friend. I can't accommodate you. You can't or you won't? Any way you wish. The answer's still the same. Now, it seems to me you're being just a little disobliging, Mr. Cromwell, seeing as how you ain't even shipped the pelt you got yet. Well, it ain't as though the world's coming to an end. Never mind, Cincinnatus. I asked and I got my answer. I never thought of you as being a man who would give up so easily, Boone. I'm not giving up, Mr. Cromwell. I'm just through asking. Sooner or later, it was bound to come to this. All right. When would you care to settle it? 
Any time, any place. Then let's say tomorrow morning at 10. Right here in your town square or whatever you call it. Well, he seems all powerful sure of himself, doesn't he, Dan? Just wonder how he's gonna feel tomorrow. Just wondering the same about me. I find you here. What do you want? I've come to ask a favor of you. Well, so you've heard about the fight. Tom, for my sake, please don't go through with it. You don't know what you're asking. I'm asking if you care at all for me to put aside this dreadful thing. I have no choice. No choice? Is your pride so great you can't admit when you're wrong? It's not a question of being right or wrong. It's a question of going to prison. Prison? Yes, prison. There was one fight and one killing I didn't tell you about because it didn't happen in the prize ring. A man attacked me with a knife and I had to kill him in self-defense. And unfortunately, there was only one witness. And he will never tell the truth in court. Why won't he? Because I'm too valuable. You see, I do his dirty work, like getting rid of Boone. And that's your excuse to kill another man? The only law I know is the one of self-preservation. Now, why don't you forget you ever knew me and go home? Tom. I said, go home. <laughs> What would she be doing out here this early in the morning? Anne, is something wrong? I heard about the fight. I wanted to warn Daniel. <clears throat> uh, Becky, maybe you'd better get the breakfast on. What fight? And what is it you don't want me to know? You mean you didn't know? It's all over the valley. I thought... Oh, I am sorry, Daniel. Don't fret. I was going to tell you after. Well, that's just fine. So I think you better tell me now. Well, it seemed to be only one way to get the men folk around here to stop trapping long enough to get the harvest in was to make Cromwell stop buying up pelts for a while. So y you came to an agreement. You're going to fight to make him stop? Well, it appears to be the only way to get it done. But you mustn't fight him, Daniel. That's what I came here to tell you. He isn't an ordinary man. Becky, uh, I sure would like to have some breakfast before I go to Fort. Not until I know what this is all about. All right, Anne. I used to fight for prize in England. Is that what you wanted to tell me? It's more than that. He's very dangerous. He told me that he... he's killed men with his bare hands. Dan... It isn't like I didn't know what I was up against, Becky. I'll be all right. I want to thank you for wanting to help. I don't know if I wanted to help you, Daniel, or if I wanted to keep Tom from fighting again. He means something to you? He was beginning to mean a great deal to me, and, and then he, he told me what kind of a man he was, and I... I thought I would never want to be near him again, and... and now I don't know. Why don't you stay here with Becky, Ann? She's pretty good at helping people get their feelings sorted out. You're going to go, then? I'm going, Becky. understand the purpose of the line, I suppose. One of us is down. We both have to toe the line again before we start fighting. Around here, we call it coming up to scratch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's only a part of it. The rest of it is this. If you don't get back to the line by the count of ten, I win by default. And, of course, I may try to prevent you from ever reaching the line. By uh, fair means or foul, huh? Fair will be sufficient. Naturally, the same rules apply should you be able to knock me down. Whoever would think it might come out that way. <laughs> I expect that he'll be very fast with his hands. And he'll know more about wrestling than both of us put together. You see, in the type of fighting that he's used to, it is permissible to use wrestling holds and also to kick a downed opponent while he's trying to rise. So if you do try to get up, make sure that you can do it quickly. I'm presuming, of course, that uh, he's able to knock you down in the first place. Well, thanks for that. I was beginning to think it wasn't a question of if I get beat, just how bad. Uh, are you ready, Mr. Boone? This man, Hamer, could clear you if he told the truth. Yes, yes, I did. I just might be going along to Salem with you. Hiring a man to commit murder is a serious offense. If I agreed not to press charges, perhaps Hamer and I could come to some arrangement. Oh, you don't owe me that. We owe you a great deal more than that. After all, that knife was meant for Dan. Well, thank you both. You're more than generous. And let me know when you're going to leave for Salem. You know, I might just take you to Salem with me, and we'll stand up for him. You know, I might just take you up on that. Like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. 